So presently, we have two main options. One is chemoimmunotherapy for patients with CLL, and the other is targeted agent, basically a brutinib uh, or delalisib and rituximab. And how we basically choose that, we look at various patient characteristics, such as their fitness and various characteristics of the CLL, mainly their uh, fish status looking for 17P. And nowadays at most of our centers, we're able to uh, do additional testing to uh, check for heavy chain mutation and P53 deletion. And using those factors is how we generally make the decision is which pathway we go to. So the rationale for that study is uh, actually one of the big themes at this meeting is uh, comparing chemoimmunotherapy and CLL to a targeted agent, sometimes with an immune agent as well. Uh, and you know, this uh, at this meeting there were uh, three big studies. One of which is uh, is the one is is Illuminate. Uh, so it's the recurring theme trying to move chemoimmunotherapy out of first line into later line and maybe never. As far as the efficacy, the main endpoint of study was to look at progression-free survival. And even without using statistics, if you look at the graphs, there's a huge difference uh, favoring the ibrutinib uh, G8, uh, obinutuzumab arm, uh, which I think is no surprise to anybody. Um, the only question I would maybe ask there, and I didn't see it anywhere in the paper or the presentation, they did take high-risk patients into uh, the study, and clearly high-risk patients would not do well with a chlorambucil-based treatment. And you just have to question how much of the benefit in the normal risk patients was driven by the uh, obvious benefit in the high-risk patients. So that's one caveat. And the other uh, sort of big unanswered question is, does the G add anything to ibrutinib? Uh, we know uh, from the study uh, presented earlier at this meeting that rituximab doesn't seem to add anything to ibrutinib. Um, you could argue it either way, but the bottom line is we don't really know if the G is necessary. There were no uh, concerning safety signals, but one encouraging thing, um, and this has been seen in some of the other papers presented here as well, that patients who are given ibrutinib with a biologic agent, be it rituximab or, or G, seem to have a decreased incidence of infusion reactions compared to the non ibrutinib arm. Uh, that's very interesting if that really holds up. It'd uh, be very nice to be able to modulate that with a very easy treatment like giving ibrutinib earlier that day. Funding is always the issue in Canada, but if we ignore, ignore that, I think it, it also would signify that ibrutinib uh, with G would be one of the standards, knowing for a while we don't have survival yet, but it's hard to imagine it would be inferior in any way. But given the huge improvement in progression free survival, I think you would at least have to think that it would soon be a standard, if not the standard therapy in that patient subgroup.